What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. And today we got a top 10 song reactions to System of a Down, brought to you by friend, longtime supporter, and patron of the channel, River. Thank you, River. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. We could not do it without them. If you'd like to support us in any way, check out that Patreon link below the patron link on the end screen. All right, River says, this was a short study, but still a hard one. System of a Down's Toxicity was my first album I ever bought for myself on CD back in 2002. You know what they say, you always remember the first one, right? I've been given albums before, but that was the first one I'd ever bought for me. It was hard to split off certain tracks, but I went with my personal favorites. So if you don't know anything about them, System of a Down is an American heavy metal band formed in Glendale, California, all the way back in 1994. Since 1997, the band has consisted of founding members Serge Tankian, lead vocals and keyboards, Darren M Malakian, Chavo, I'm not even going to butcher his last name, I've already butchered plenty of names, bass, backing vocals, along with John Dolmey and drums, who replaced original drummer Andy Kaschaturin. These names are tough, boys and girls. The band achieved commercial success with the release of five studio albums, three of which debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard Top 200. They've been nominated for four Grammy Awards, and their song BYOB won a Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock Performance in 2006. They went on a hiatus in 2006, reunited in 2010, other than two new songs in 2020, they have not released any new material since the Mesmerize and Hypnotize albums in 2005. They sold over 12 million records worldwide, while two of their singles, Aerials and Hypnotize, reached number one on Billboard's Alternative Songs chart. So some success here for sure. All members of a system of a down are of Armenian descent, either born to Armenian immigrants or immigrants themselves, which is why... This guy is having a hard time with the name, so sorry about that. But if you've never been on this before, the music will not be in the video, but it'll be a Vimeo link below. So click on that and follow along with us. Let's get this thing started with number 10, Mr. Jack from Steal This Album in 2002, their third studio album. River said the only song on Steal This Album, but in my opinion, catches the frenetic political energy System of a Down is known for. This was on their first demo tape. The first version of this was called P.I.G. Yeah, there's dots between each one. So P-I-G. All right, I'm going to lyrics up as always. Thanks again, River. All right, Mr. Jack, good way to start this top 10 off because it shows you, I mean, there's all kinds of tempo changes within this song to the very last 30 seconds, getting that machine gun action going with the F-U pig. And I mean, it's about police, not just brutality, but just wrongdoing. And I mean, if they were writing about this in 2002, imagine, uh, imagine what they would think now in 2024 or something. I'm filming this, but, you know, guitar work was great. I mean, it's just really well put together song. Great musicianship. Remember, this is from their third album. We're going to dial it back for the next two songs because we've got War, question mark, from the self-titled debut in 1998. Serge wrote this on the booklet of the disc before the lyrics to the song. He said, quote, we first fought the heathens in the name of religion, then communism, and now in the name of drugs and terrorism. Our excuses for global domination always change. I'll address that at the end of this song. All right, war. It's about the fact that there's always going to be a reason to go to war. And most of the time, the true reason is not stated. There's a manufactured reason to try to get everybody behind it, not only the soldiers, but the public. And I mean, we go all the way back, Dylan writing in Masters of War. We got Marley with War. Heck, we had Def Leppard in 1987 or 88 on Hysteria singing Gods of War. Like Everybody knows this, right? But the people in power, they push all the buttons. They're not the ones going to fight, but they're pushing the buttons. So I'm mean, coming out of the gate in your debut album with this. Pretty impressive. We're going to stay on the debut album with our number eight, Spiders. It's on the soundtrack for the movie Scream 3, second single off the album. What charted? This one charted some U.S. Alternative 38, Mainstream Rock 25. All right, Spiders. So it's about a girl who has a V-chip implanted in her brain where the government are manipulating her. Right, that's the spiders, the dreams are running through her head that they are putting in her head. This is 1998 when they wrote this. This could actually happen now. It may actually be happening now. I don't know, I'm not some big conspiracy guy, but the technology's there for sure. So uh, quite uh, forward thinking on System of a Down on their very first album. Next up at number seven off the Mesmerize album in 2005, their fourth studio album, we got Cigarro. It's based on a Cheney-like character Serge said on Reddit. Cigarro. So look, I'm not going to get into the lyrics, but basically what it's about is, look, mine's bigger than yours. Mine's better than yours. You know, the egos of males that drive this world and the damage that it does as they continue to inflate those egos up and up and up. And I got to top you and I got to top you. It goes back to the war issue 
corporate takeovers, economies tanking because it's never enough. I mean, that's basically what it's about. So it's an, it's a, a creative way to put it. I didn't really care for it, the arrangement and all that. I don't care about the words. I mean, they're exactly right on all that. But, you know, still still an interesting song. Now, number six, we got Toxicity off the album of the same name in 2001. Their second studio album. It's ranked 14 on VH1's 40 Greatest Metal Songs and was called the New Metal Classic by Stylist Magazine. During a performance at the 2005 Download Festival, Darren said that the song was about ADHD, a psychological condition that interferes with an individual's executive functions. Went to number 70 on the Billboard Hot 100, three on alternative, 10 on mainstream rock, three times platinum. All right, Toxicity. I've noticed on almost all of these songs, they mix it right up to the very end, so you got to stop it kind of mid-sentence to something. But, uh, you know, this one also gets into not only the ADHD talking about, how did he put it, eating seeds to pastime activity, but the toxicity of our city is also talking about leaders, right? Same stuff, a lot of the same, you know, concepts as war and some other things, but guitar work coming in strong. I haven't talked about it on a couple of songs. I meant to mention it. They have very good guitar melodies. I mean, they'll go all in and change tempos up, but they have very good guitar melodies you had on this song, and then they kind of came in hard at the end. All right, now we're to the top half of this list. We got Hypnotize off the Hypnotize album in 2005, their fifth studio album. So the, those two albums came out right by each other. But this track, River says this track off the album that gets the most love on this list is I think it's their best. Not much else to say here. Was the lead single, UK went to 48, went to 57 on the Billboard Hot 100. So even higher than Toxicity. Number one on US Alternative, number five on the mainstream rock and went platinum. So did a million copies. And Darren said this, he said, I see us as a socially conscious band, not just a political band. The guy sitting in his car waiting for his girl with the world going on around it. It comes down to that. That's what System of a Down means to me. He said that when he was talking about this song. So let's go. Hypnotize. Talks about Tiananmen Square. Obviously, there was a, a guy standing in front of a tank when they were protesting there and just kind of talking about people get lost in their lives and don't worry about standing up for justice. They're worried about picking up their girlfriend or getting their next thing done. So we're kind of hypnotized to that, to not question things. So good track. Next up, we have Ariel's Off Toxicity in 2001. Third single from the album, which earned the band its second Grammy Award nom for Best Hard Rock Performance in 2003. Hit number one on both the Billboard Alternative songs and mainstream rock charts. It was their first number one hit. Surge said, we didn't know it would become a big hit or anything, but truthfully, we never even thought about it. It was just another song. We liked it, but we like all our music. Anything we don't like gets thrown away. Went to 61 in Canada, 34 in the UK, and 55 on the US Billboard Hot 100, and sold 2 million copies, so two times platinum. So their singles do a ton of business. Like, you get to platinum, you're doing unreal. And we've had a few here that went two and three times platinum. All right, Ariel's. Another well-done song. I haven't really commented much on the lyrics. I'm reading them all, and I'm processing them all. I think every song means something. And they've said in concert, the song doesn't isn't about anything. They've said that on several times. But I think it's more about you being a, a small cog in a big wheel, but you don't see it that way. You don't know, like the aerial view of like you just see yourself as this tiny speck, but you're really part of the bigger society. And so when you just view yourself and you're isolated off, you don't do anything to make change. Maybe I'm reading that in there, but that's kind of how I take it. Number three, we got Soldier Side off the Hypnotize album in 2005. River says, I take this album closer in the intro off Mesmerize that shares its title as sort of a nod that the two albums are double albums without being on the same release as the album share theme. So once again, I'm taking the one off Hypnotize. Soldier Side, really well done. I thought the arrangement was fantastic because I think it's a quick strings back there in the background. Builds to the drama of this song and sets the atmosphere because it's about soldiers going off to war. Their moms are, you know, know that they're probably not coming back and they're praying to Jesus. Are they going to, is he going to save them when he comes back? Cause they're going to die talking about the graves and you know, it's kind of a no win situation. So the theme of a lot of these songs, you know, just the innocent carrying out the works of the powerful, but I thought that was really well done. Next up at number two, probably be a lot of people's number ones. BYOB from Mesmerize in 2005. Stands for bring your own bombs. Lead single, like the earlier song, boom, it's written in protest against the Iraq war. Song reached 27 on the Hot 100 in the U.S., the band's highest peak to date. Won Best Hard Rock Performance at the 2006 Grammys. Also went to 26 in the U.K., four on the U.S. Alternative and Mainstream Charts. Sold 3 million copies. Darren told MTV, 
I don't see it as a political song. The lyrics saying, why don't presidents fight the war? Why do they always send the poor? That's not a thought to politics or anything else. That's just a viewpoint. It's just a question. I think more than politics, we try to spark questions that the powers that be don't want you to ask. It's more about a social commentary. It's about a few different things as opposed to being pointed at one thing. I was talking about that earlier, Masters of War. That's exactly what Dylan was addressing. So I'm pretty sure I know this song. I thought I knew more songs from System of Down. I haven't known one of these songs, but pretty sure I know this song. Once again, they're taking me right up to the end. I got to cut it off with one second left because it's just going to pop out. You know, I, I don't know this song. I know I knew the name of it because, you know, it sticks out BYOB. But yeah, I mean, it's really good. It changes in tempo. It's this great melody in there. And then it goes, goes in hard. Surprise it was that big of a hit because of that. It's not exactly mainstream radio friendly, but... Thought it was thought it was well done, very well written. And Drummond were the number one song. We got Holy Mountains from Hypnotize in 2005. River said this may be among my favorite songs ever. Some days the song's about the Armenian genocide. And while I'll say to listen to the album version, I recommend to anyone to watch their performance of this song at Republic Square in Armenia, as you can feel the pain of the crowd and the catharsis of the song, especially as they open the song during that performance with a discussion of those who work to have the Armenian genocide recognized globally. And I found Holy Mountains references Mount Ariat, an important symbol in Armenian culture and details that the soul's loss to the Armenian genocide have returned to rest here. Serge told MTV, it's important for people to be aware of the atrocities inflicted on the Amer Armenian people by the Ottoman Empire during World War I. And those actions continue to be covered up by the Turkish government, the U.S. State Department, the U.S. administration, and Turkey's allies in the defense and oil industries. The Armenian genocide happened. It was very real to the 1.5 million Armenians who were murdered or deported from their homeland. Had the Armenian genocide been deemed a crime against humanity in the books after World War I, Hitler might not have thought he could get away with the Jewish Holocaust. Well, see, I've never even heard of the Armenian genocide. Now I'm going to have to go read about it. All right, Holy Mountains, River's number one system of a down song. It's a really good song. Well-written, powerful I thought they did a great job with the arrangement, enunciating the things, you know, liar, killer, all those things that needed to be enunciated when you know the story behind the song. It takes on great power, man. Great power. Vocal performance is great. So, fitting number one. Now, before we get to my favorite tracks, I'll say a couple. I, I thought the instrumentation was, was fantastic on this album. You know, really well done. All of it. Drumming, guitar work, vocals were good sometimes. It was Serge and Darren trading off every once in a while. I thought that was... That was really good. I enjoyed that interplay. Didn't know any songs from System of a Down. I just would have told you, surely I do. I mean, I know their name real well, but didn't know any of these songs. Maybe I know something else. I don't know. But I think if I didn't know BYOB, I doubt I know anything else. But as we get into my faves, this is an interesting one for me because I didn't hate any song and I didn't really love any song on first listen. So it's good. There's no song I'll, I'll probably put on my list to repeat on my, but I mean, they're really, really solid. So the, in that, you're going to have a ton of honorable mentions just because, I mean, I liked them. Honorable mentions, War, Spiders, Toxicity, Hypnotize, Aerials, and BYOB. Favorites are going to be Soldier Side and this last song, Holy Mounds. I think that is the number, the right number one choice. And so guys, let me know what you think of this list down below. What are your faves? You can put your top five, top 10 if you want to as well. If you do that, you're going to see how tough this exercise really is. So thank you to River for putting this together. And until next time, guys, I will see you.